With Apex Legends chugging along in its 11th season, lots of new players and streamers have been making their way to this game. But there are a ton of little things in Apex that even some veteran players aren't aware about. So hello everyone, I'm your host with the Moses 8 Second Gaming and today I'm going to be breaking down Apex completely and giving you the ultimate beginner's guide to Apex Legends. Like I said, there are tons of new players coming in every day and this game can be a little overwhelming to some. But don't worry, after this video you will have everything you you need to know to jump into the game with a good understanding. And if you find yourself enjoying Apex and want to keep playing and improving, don't forget to drop a like on this video and smash that sub button. Here at Game Leap Apex, we do daily, highly educational videos aimed at making people the best Apex players they can be, so ring that bell to be notified when a new video comes out. But now let's talk Apex. This is a battle royale first person shooter set in the Titanfall universe, another game made by Respawn. But unlike Titanfall, you aren't playing as a pilot or see Titans running around. This game is set years in the future and follows the events of Titanfall 2. Here you are a legend in the Apex games, a blood sport that's televised in the Outlands run by the Mercenary Syndicate headed by Cuban Blisk. These games you enter different arenas and fight to be the last team standing, also known as the Champions of the Arena. Currently in the game as of Season 11, there are 19 legends to pick from, those being Ash, Bangalore, Bloodhound, Caustic, Crypto, Fuse, Gibraltar, Horizon, Lifeline, Loba, Mirage, Octane, Pathfinder, Rampart, Revenant, Seer, Valkyrie, Watson, and Wraith. Each of these legends have unique kits designed around helping you and your team in different ways during fights. I won't cover their abilities here because that will make this video way too long and go way too far off course. So if you want a basic rundown of them and help you pick what legend to main, go check out one of our other videos on the channel called How to Pick Your Perfect Main, where I cover everything there. But the legends and the abilities they use aren't the only form of of combat diversity Apex has to offer. There are tons of guns to be used around the arena and they all offer something different to help you out. These guns break down into different categories such as assault rifle, submachine gun, shotgun, marksman rifle, pistols, light machine guns, and sniper rifles. With all these guns come different ammo types and these also do different things. Light ammo guns have less damage per bullet but fire faster. Heavy bullets typically fire slower but hit harder per bullet and energy ammo has less bullet drop than the others. And then arrows, sniper and shotgun ammo don't do anything special. Then running around you may notice that there are some guns people are using but they don't spawn on the ground and these are what we call care package weapons. These weapons do change from season to season but currently in season 11 the guns are the Spitfire, G7 Scout, Alternator and Kraber. These only spawn from the game generated care packages that fall throughout the match. They aren't guaranteed though, so if you loot one and don't find a gun, that's perfectly normal. Now, guns are fun, but what if you are a pyromaniac and like watching stuff go boom? And well, don't worry because Apex does have grenades. There are three ground loot grenades, these being Arcstars, Franks, and Thermites. And not trying to sound like a broken record, but yes, these are all different and help you in certain ways. Arcstars are probably everyone's favorite because how amazing they are. Arcstars are basically this game's version of Semtex from Call of Duty or Plastic plasma grenade from Halo. When thrown, these will attach to any surface they hit, including legends, and after a short delay, they blow up damaging and slowing anyone caught in the radius. Sticking someone is always the way to go though, because the impact deals damage and applies the slow, leaving them very vulnerable and basically a free kill. Frag grenades are more basic, they don't have any special gimmicks or stuff like that, it's just a nade that you can throw and after 6 seconds of time they will explode. If you can throw them high enough though, they will be airborne for that 6 seconds and detonate on ground contact, leaving your enemies unable to to react to them. And last up we have thermites. These just create a wall of fire that will burn anyone that touches it over time. These are mainly used for flushing players from behind cover or cutting off doorways and choke points. Now I should mention for all you new players that most doors in Apex can be destroyed and one grenade will blow them up when close enough to it. Now I want to touch on the time to kill because Apex does have a very fast time to kill with most guns being able to kill sub one second with all headshots and grenades being able to do 75 to 100 damage with the right placement. This will change through your games because there is a headshot multiplier in Apex that does get affected by helmets. The higher grade of the helmet, the lower damage done to the head. But this leads perfectly into talking about Apex's items because there are a lot of them thrown around the map. Some of these things are very basic so I don't want to get into them. So the things I do want to talk about are the gold items. These are very rare and offer special attributes to the person wielding them. 
These are Gold Helm, Body Armor, Backpack, Knockdown Shield, Magazine, and the two Digital Threat Sights. First off, let's talk about the helmet. This offers the same level of protection a Purple Helmet does. There's no difference between them when it comes to that, but what the Gold Helmet offers is faster charging on your abilities. So stuff like your Legends Tactical and Ultimate charge at a faster rate. These are more useful in characters that spam their abilities or ones that have high cooldowns like Bloodhound and Gibraltar. Gold Body Armor has gone through a lot of changes over the years, but the one they've landed on is a form of faster healing. The gold body armor offers 100 extra health, broken into 4 segments of 25 HP each. Normally a shield cell fills 25, but on gold armor that's double and you get 50, allowing you to pop heals faster and be back in fights. These are the exact same for syringes also, not just the shield cells. And gold armor isn't best on anyone, just mainly people who like to get in and out of fights very quickly, so someone like Wraith or Octane. Now if you're coming from Warzone, you'll know that you can buy a self revive kit, something to give you a second chance at a fight without needing a teammate. And that's exactly what the Gold Knockdown Shield is. This gives the user the ability to self-revive just once with it. It does make the noise of being revived though, so do be careful. And after you've pulled off that successful self-revive once, it changes to purple so you can't use it over and over. Gold Backpack offers the same amount of extra slots as a purple, but this one's extra benefit comes when reviving teammates who have been knocked. Normally when you get picked up you have 25 health, enough to run away with but not enough to fight with. With Gold Bag you get revived with 50 health and 50 shields, so you're up with a 100 effective health pool and are able to fight immediately if it calls for that. This item is best on support legends like Lifeline and Gibby, the ones who are usually doing the resing. And the gold mag is basically just an extended mag for your gun. But where this one is special is after you holster your gun, it automatically reloads the weapon for you after a short delay, making it so that you don't have to. So in fights when you spray all your bullets and have to swap to another one, the gun is automatically reloaded for you really clutching up in certain fights. But now that we have those items covered, let's talk about the two digital threats, and these are simplest terms thermal scopes in Apex. When scoped in, you can see enemies lit up as red or whatever color your colorblind modes has them set to. These are a little weird to get used to at first, but they are worth it because they counter legends like Caustic and Bangalore, allowing you to see right through their gases. The main one you'll find all over is the 1x sight. This can only be used on pistols, SMGs, and shotguns. No ARs, LMGs, marksmen, or sniper rifles for this guy. But there is a second one though, a 4 to 10x that's only for our sniper rifles. And this one does only spawn in care packages randomly or if there's a gold sniper in your draw spot, so there's no way to guarantee this in your game, you just have to get lucky. And I don't think I could do a guide to Apex without touching on the topic that makes the game so different from other BRs and that is the movement you can do. There are so many things players can pull off in Apex and if you watch certain people like Asu, it seems like they are on ice skates the way the legend just glides around the map. We also did do a full movement guide on the channel, so if you're interested in learning all the awesome movement techniques in Apex, go check that one out also. It dives in and gives a breakdown on how to do all the main ones for both mouse and keyboard and controller players. But one thing for movement that I do want to touch on in this video is putting your gun away when just running around the map. All legends in Apex run at the same base speed, the only thing that changes that are abilities and the gun you have out. Holding out different guns slows you down different amounts, LMGs the most, pistols the least. So when you're not fighting and just moving around, Around, you'll want to holster your gun by pressing 3 on mouse and keyboard or holding Y or triangle on controller. This will allow you to run at a faster base speed and be a lot more efficient at getting around the map. And speaking about getting around the map quickly, there are two main ways that don't involve legends. These are tridents and jump towers. Tridents are just cars that can fit all three legends on a team, giving you a fast way to get from point A to point B. But they are loud when doing it, they will draw some attention so do be aware. If you do draw attention and do get shot, the trident will even disperse the damage done across all legends of the car so it does give you a little protection. But if someone manages to stick the vehicle with an arc star, it will completely disable it for a brief time, making it so you have to jump out to avoid the damage that's coming. Tridents are fun, but the other option is to use a jump tower or some do call them redeploy balloons. These are towers that are placed around the map. You zip line up and once you reach the top, your character then flies like you do when leaving the dropship. This allows a very fast rotation, but once again, it makes a lot of noise and leaves your skydive trail showing where you went. So both of these options do have their ups and downs. But that is going to pretty much cover all the basics for Apex. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and found this useful. Apex does have a ton of stuff packed into it, so if you're still confused on anything, please do drop a comment and ask. I'm sure either myself or someone else will be able to answer your question and help guide you 
you in the right direction. Once again though, if you guys found this video useful, please do drop a thumbs up, it really helps us out. And if you are planning on sticking with Apex and want the best tips and tricks to help you out on your journey, you'll definitely want to smash that sub button and ring the bell if you haven't already. We do daily, highly educational Apex videos you do not want to miss out on. So thank you all for watching, once again I'm 8 Second Gaming and I will see you in the next one.